Ja, dann herzlich willkommen, liebe Ninos-Freunde, zu einer Spezialausgabe von Ninos360. Wir haben ein kleines Weihnachtsgeschenk für euch, nämlich einen äh, Interviewpartner, nämlich neben mir sitzt Rodrigo Pastore. Grüß dich, Rodrigo. Hallo, Thomas. Wir werden in der kommenden, schau mal, wie lange es dauert, äh, ein bisschen über die Niners reden, aber auch über den privaten Rodrigo Pastore. Und äh, da will ich direkt aber mit den Niners starten. Rodrigo, du bist jetzt äh, 2015 nach Chemnitz gekommen im Sommer äh, und hast da eine Mannschaft, einen Verein vorgefunden, der so ein bisschen um, im Umbruch war. Ähm, wie würdest du das vergleichen, äh, die Niners 2015 und die Niners jetzt 2017? Wow, um, there was a big difference between um, Niners that I found two years ago and the Niners right now. Um, we have to give a lot of credit to, to management and Martin Schuster back then as president now, uh, Michaela and, and Stefan, president and, and sports director. Um, we, have, we have improved in, in a lot of areas. Uh, our ability to do our jobs, uh, practice times, um, recruiting, um, the way we travel on, on game days, um, road games um, and then I think everybody can see it also in the Harman Halle um, how much we have improved and um, it's, uh, it's incredible when we think that it's been only two years and, and how much this club has improved and um, so looking forward seeing the the next step forward what what is what it's going to be like in two years from now, how much more this, uh, this team, the club, the whole organization can improve and, and, and in the areas that can get better at. Schauen wir mal, ob in zwei Jahren immer noch Daniel und Jonas dabei sind, denn die äh, sind mit dir zusammen quasi, also nicht mit dir gestartet, aber die sind auch da, seitdem du da bist. Ähm, warum vertraust du immer noch auf sie äh, und setzt auf die beiden jungen Spieler? Well, when I got here in Chemnitz, I, I believe they were the best two youngsters in, in the youth movement. And, and I believed that they had a bright future ahead of them, um, especially with Jonas, who first game of the season, he was a starter for, for us. Um, then yeah, um, Daniel also, uh, during the second part of that first season was a start they had, had a very good season finished the season very very strong it's been fun working with them uh, hopefully it was also it's also fun for them working with me <laughs> but uh, just to see them growing just to see them developing into the the players uh, that they are today to see them struggling and overcoming struggles and it's um it's been a fun ride. Um, they, they are very, very uh, smart kids. They work very hard. I'm hoping that they show uh, the rest of the young kids in our youth movement in, in, with the Niners what it takes to make it to the, um, to the first team and how much a work and dedication and professionality um, a player needs to not only arrive but to also stay at that level in which they've been playing for the last two years. In deiner ersten Saison als Trainer hast du es geschafft, die Niners wieder in die Playoffs zu führen. Das erste Mal nach vier Jahren, glaube ich, wieder oder drei Jahren. Ihr wurdet Siebender, seid dann gegen Jena in der ersten Runde ausgeschieden, die spätere Meister und Aufsteiger in die erste Liga. In der zweiten Saison bist du Dritter geworden mit der Mannschaft, bist dann erst im Halbfinale sehr, sehr unglücklich gegen, gegen die Rockets ausgeschieden. Der Hype im Sommer war sehr, sehr groß für die Niners alle. Haben, das Thema BBL war sehr präsent hier in Chemnitz. Und nun ist es das erste Mal so, seitdem du da bist, dass es ein, ein kleines Problemchen gibt, sage ich mal, mit der Mannschaft, dass es, dass es irgendwie nach außen hin wirkt, als wäre nicht alles, würde nicht alles rund laufen. Es geht nicht weiter bergauf. Ähm, Trotzdem vertraust du den Jungs? Jetzt mal JJ ausgenommen, wo es ein paar Probleme mit der Integration gab. Trotzdem vertraust du den Jungs? Ähm, manche wären vielleicht schon hektischer geworden und hätte andere, hätten andere Entscheidungen getroffen. Was gibt dir denn die Zuversicht, dass es genau mit den Jungs in der zweiten Saisonhälfte äh, wieder bergauf geht? Well, it's not, uh, 
abnormal not to not to face struggles. Last year, as good as it was, a lot of things went went right. Um, Injuries, for example, that was something that even though we faced them, it was never um, in a situation in which we had to face multiple problems at the same time. Uh, this is something that has arisen uh, this year. Some of them uncontrollable situations in which, uh, and it can happen, that players are not performing as expected, injuries, uh, team identity and uh, I think they, they, the players have been doing a very good job um, keeping the, um, the, the momentum and not giving up on themselves, not giving up on the team. Um, what makes me believe in the team is what I've seen uh, every day in training sessions. Uh, I see a team that is committed, that is dedicated that wants to turn the, the season around, that wants to become um, a real team who can, who can win not only at home but also on the road. Um, and we will do that if we keep on working the way we've been working for the last three, four weeks, regardless of circumstances, uh, some things we cannot control. We are determined not to let these circumstances that we cannot control um, determine the outcome of the season. So regardless of injuries, regardless of bad performance, regardless of whatever negative situation might arise, we want to become the kind of team that we can uh, become. We want to play to our potential. We want our fans to be proud um, of what we do on the court. And, uh, and we're working very, very hard for that. Um, I believe it's a matter of time. I believe in these players. Uh, they believe in themselves. And, and I believe that we have turned the corner the last weeks. Um, and hopefully results are going to prove us right. Jetzt will ich nicht in alten Wunden bohren, aber die Niederlage gegen Gotha nach 2-0 Führung in dem Halbfinale ähm wie schwer wiegt die noch? War es vielleicht für dich auch die schlimmste Niederlage als Trainer? Wie, wie, wie hast du das gesehen damals? There are no nice defeats in, in basketball, especially for, for a trainer. Um, was it the toughest defeat that I ever faced? Uh, probably the second toughest. Um, but yes, we, it's, it's part of of our jobs. Uh, I can live and I can deal with defeats better when, uh, when I see a team um, that plays together, that has pride, uh, that plays for something that is big, bigger than, than the players itself. When I see dedication, when I see the commitment, the, um, and the passion that, that we want our players to have here in Chemnitz 99ers. So, um, to answer your question, there are no nice defeats. That was a tough one, but uh, we really believe that everything happens for a reason, uh, and it's up to us to make that reason a positive one. So, we will learn from it, we will get better, and hopefully the next time we're in the same situation, we will come out uh, as winners. Ähm, letztes Jahr gab es einen Bericht darüber, dass, glaube ich, Martin Seifert und Malte Ziegenhagen äh, einen Mentalcoach sich zur Hilfe gezogen haben. Ähm, nun könnte man ja denken, dass in, gerade in dieser Phase, in der die Niners jetzt sind bzw. waren, ähm, dass da wieder auf so, auf so eine Hilfe zurückgegriffen wird. Ist das wieder so? Gibt es wieder Hilfe von Mentalcoaches? Da sind einige big teams, um, NBA-Teams und andere Sports too, the Mental coach is part of the coaching staff, and not only to work with individual players, but to work with the whole team as a unit. Um, to be honest with you, I only found out after the season that two of our players were working with mental okay. coaches. And to be honest with you, I did not realize during the season that um, of any particular improvement that was related to 
players being working with mental coaches. So I believe it could be something beneficial for a team if these mental coaches working together with the coaching staff. Um, otherwise, we can be misleading players into doing or trying to do things that maybe uh, is not expected from them. So, um, is, it, is it important? Yeah, probably it's important. Uh, but I see it as a teamwork. Uh, it should be a teamwork. That's the way big teams do it. Um, and why not? Hopefully, or maybe in the future, we have the possibility to to add a person uh, with these skills in our coaching staff. Why not? Um, Im Sommer hatten wir ja schon mal in der ersten Liga geschnuppert, sage ich mal. Um, dieses Jahr läuft es nicht so rund, um, dennoch ist nichts ausgeschlossen. Aber uh, glaubst du, dass mittelfristig die BBL immer noch ein realistisches Ziel für den Verein ist? Oder sollte man jetzt erstmal um, nicht so weit nach oben schauen? Um, I think I have no doubt in my mind that um, Kevin Snyder Niners will play in the BBL. When I don't have the the magic sphere, the crystal ball to to determine. But uh, the way the club is working, the, the way the club is improving and getting better, uh, it's a matter of time. I, I don't think the question is, is Chemnitz 99ers going to make it to the BBL? I think the question right now, and this is where the club is working very hard, is when we make it, are we going to be able to stay in BBL? Um, and we're working for that very, very hard. The work that um, is being done with the youth movement, the work that is being done with um, coaching staff and, and improving in all areas around the club is, is the right way to, uh, for us to succeed, uh, not only making it, but staying in the BBL. So, um, Two years ago, um, I first arrived in Chemnitz and I'm asking everybody, why shouldn't our goals be uh, directing the club into the BBL? And nobody believed uh, that, that we should even be considering that. And I'm happy that in only two years, the mentality of this club has changed drastically and that now we uh, have expectations that are much higher than just competing or, or being good in pro. Uh, um, it takes time, sometimes it takes a little bit of luck too, things that we cannot control, but I can guarantee all our fans that everybody in the club, in the organization is working extremely hard to achieve these goals, that is to, to bring Chemnitz 99ers to the BBL and not only to do that, but also to keep it there for a long time. Zum letzten Heimspiel gegen Baunach haben sich die Fans eine besondere Aktion einfallen lassen. Die haben äh, 15 Jahre Fanclub gefeiert. Chemnitz Crew äh, wurde vor 15 Jahren gegründet. Ähm, wie siehst du unsere Fans? Ähm, ja, wie nimmst du die Atmosphäre bei den Heimspielen wahr? You asked me before um, if I see Chemnitz in the BBL and and I told you a little bit the story when I first came over here that my question was why we are not ambitious, why we do not uh, feel like we could be in BBL. The first thing that caught my attention when I got to know Chemnitz 99ers organization was the fans and the atmosphere in the, in the gym. And, and uh, that was not normal for a pro team. Um, and my experience uh, with, with BBL basketball was this atmosphere here in Chemnitz that, that I have experienced for the last two years, not many BBL teams have it. So I think there is a place in BBL for a team like Chemnitz. And, and we're showing it right now in the face of adversity that uh, we are a strong organization, knows what it wants and will do what's necessary to achieve those goals and, and help in every possible way to put uh, players and coaching staff into a winning situation. 
Nun hast du ja selber auch professionell Basketball gespielt, bist dann Trainer geworden, jetzt schon einige Jahre. Ähm, hast du jetzt noch ein Vorbild, ein Trainervorbild, vielleicht ein NBA-Trainer oder ein Trainer, der, der dich selber mal trainiert hat früher? Gibt es da Vorbilder, die du noch hast? Well, uh, that's a good question. I'm the son of a coach, so uh, I think there is a lot of my dad in me, but obviously the uh, playing for four years for uh, for my college coach, uh, as th that's also where where I learned a lot about about the game, about. Uh, how to coach, how to organize uh, practices, how to, uh, how to deal with players, how to, um, how to talk to them. Um, X's and O's related. Uh, my, my, the, the first coach that made an impact on me from distance, it was Coach Messina when he was coaching in Benetton Treviso. Uh, that was a team that um, The, um, that I really liked from the outside, the way they were playing, uh, the style of basketball. After that, I followed very closely uh, a team that won seven championships in a row in Italy. That was Montepaschi Siena, Coach Pianisciani, Coach Banchi. They, um, they were at that moment playing what I thought it was the best basketball in Europe. And, and at the same time, There was another young coach in Italy that caught my attention um, because he was coaching close to where I was. I could see him working daily and that was uh, Coach Trinchieri working in Cantu. Um, then I was lucky enough also to be close to him when he was in Bamber, uh, especially his first year. And I would have to say that all those coaches that I just mentioned had the biggest impact in me as a coach the way they make their teams play, uh, the way they go through their daily activities with the team. Um, I was really impressed in a very positive way and I tried to bring that also into my teams. Um, nun warst du ja selber Aufbauspieler, Point Guard, glaube ich, oder? Ja. Du warst Aufbauspieler. Um, wenn du dich heute selbst trainieren müsstest, um, wie würdest du dich versuchen, besser zu machen damals? Könntest du dich besser machen damals? Well, one thing, uh, when I talk to, um, to the players in the team, and, and I found myself doing that a lot this year, uh, video sessions and, and trying to advise them, I always tell them that the reason why I do that is because I wish somebody would have told me the same things. Uh, so what I would have told me as a player is the same things that I'm telling the guys right now. Uh, to, to take time outside of the basketball court. Being a professional player is not just coming to practice. Uh, learning the game, studying the game, taking time to prepare for games, not only physically but also mentally. But, um, but the main thing is about the, the, the daily constant improvement. Uh, that's something that, um, as players, uh, maybe we don't think that much uh, about it. And, and once you, uh, you become a coach, you realize how important is uh, the knowledge of the game. I wish I would know, I would have known then, as player, what I know right now. Um, And it's, in, it's, uh, it's very clear I would have been a much, much better player. Uh, but I didn't take that extra time to improve on, on learning the game, studying the game, learning from better players. And then the young guys right now have tools and possibilities to do that that we never had it before. Uh, for me to, To be able to, to learn from some of the best players in the game, maybe I had to drive four or five hours to a, to a road game, a uh, um, Euroleague game, and now you just you turn the TV, computer, you can watch full games, you can see highlights from all the best players in Europe in the NBA, um, and that's something that we didn't have back then. So, What I'm the biggest message for, for our young guys right now is take the time off the court 
and, and trying to improve as much as possible. And it has nothing to do with jumping higher, running faster, or bigger muscles. It has to do with the mental part of the game. Learning and studying and getting better at uh, understanding what is going on the court different times of the game and how coaches see the game because players on the court need to understand different situations and how to react to those situations. And it comes with time, it comes with experience, but it also comes with, um, with the ability to, um, to learn. Ich will nochmal auf die Vorbilder äh, zu sprechen kommen. In Deutschland will ja, will ja jeder Jugendliche so sein wie Dirk Nowitzki oder jetzt Dennis Schröder. In Amerika ist es immer Michael Jordan, LeBron James. Äh, wie war das in Argentinien bei dir damals? Hast du in die NBA geschaut oder hast du eher den nationalen Basketball angeguckt? Wer war da dein Vorbild, als du angefangen hast? You guys got Dirk Nowitzki, we have Manu Ginobili. Yeah. So, uh, I'm pretty sure he's the He's the main um, idol for all the, um, the young uh, Argentinian basketball players, and, and rightly so. Uh, super athlete, an incredible professional, a great, great uh, role model. So we're pretty lucky to have a player like that. Like you guys here are very lucky to have a, a role model, a player like Dern Nowitzki. And damals, als du klein warst, uh, hattest du da ein Vorbild, uh, wo du aufgeschaut hast? Mm. Yes, I'm, I'm not only one. I remember my bedroom having a couple of posters, Magic Johnson, Charles Barclay. But I, I had um, uh, I love watching those guys play. Uh, Isaiah Thomas, mm. that, was, that was one of my favorites. And um, Kevin Johnson, point guard for, for Phoenix Suns. Um, It was Magic and Isaiah, yeah. Kevin Johnson. <laughs> I like how he shot the jumpers, and I tried to do that like him. But Isaiah was, Isaiah was incredible. That was my guy, and, and Magic, those two guys. What was the year they played the finals, 87, 88? I had a short story because we didn't have, a, in my place, in my house, we didn't have satellite. Okay. So I remember d taking the bus and for two hours driving to my grandma's house because she had, um, I think it was like now Sky, um, and I could watch live the games, uh, the NBA Finals, I think it was 87, 88 Lakers against Detroit. I think the Lakers won four to three. That was the year Isaiah got hurt in game six. He came back, he scored like 40 points being injured. Um, but that was the back-to-back the -back years of the, of the Lakers. And then after that, the, the Pistons won back-to-back -to -back too. So I would have to say Magic and Isaiah were my, back as a kid, were my, role models, two players that I would yeah, try to imitate, especially Isaiah Thomas. He was incredible. Ball handling skills, shooting, driving, creating for teammates. But who didn't want to be like Magic Johnson on the open court running fast break back then? That was, that was incredible. So uh, yeah, like every kid we look after best players in the game and we try to play like them. Um, hast du denn noch guten Kontakt oder viel Kontakt nach Hause? Du hast mit Sicherheit uh, noch viel Familie in Argentinien. Um, wie sieht das aus bei dir? Yeah, it's uh, like with everybody who lives abroad and I'm far from family, we, we stay in touch, we're in contact and uh, sometimes on daily basis and yeah, this uh, is 2017, uh, Skype and, 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 and WhatsApp and, and, and video messages. So it's, uh, it's, it's way different to the way it was 20 years ago when I first left my country to go in America to, to attend university and study and play. Uh, we had to write letters back then. Now it's 
It's much easier. Nun haben die Niners ja am 23.12. ein Spiel, auch zwischen Weihnachten und Silvester nochmal ein Spiel. Ähm, bleibt da für dich überhaupt Zeit, Weihnachten richtig zu feiern? I try to find a little bit of time to be with, with my family and my daughter. And, uh, but obviously we need to work also on, on the 25th. And especially this year that we have a, a game on the 28th. Um, and it's part of our job. We, we love what we do, we do with passion. Uh, the competitor inside of us uh, will not allow us to relax, to enjoy free time. On there is always something to do, to prepare, to to think about. And, uh, and I'm very lucky that I have an assistant coach like Aiko uh, in the coaching staff that puts a lot of effort, dedication too. Not only him, everybody in the office, starting from the guys at the top, sports director, uh, Felix, Pate, Cindy. I mean, it's incredible how much uh, passion and, and dedication there is behind the Niners organization. And I hope our fans understand that and appreciate that. There is a lot of people working very hard for the team. Um, These are all guys that are not going to, to give up or to slow down in the face of adversity. Uh, actually, I'm convinced that this adversity that we've been facing early in the season will make us better and stronger. And we will be a much better team, a much better organization as the season goes along. So, ich trotzdem noch mal kurz auf die Familie zurückkommen. Um ein Trainer zu sein ist ja viel mehr als einfach nur am Spieltag, am, am Spielfeld dran zu stehen, sondern da steckt ja viel mehr äh, Arbeit dahinter, gerade am Wochenende viel arbeiten, abends arbeiten, bei den Trainingseinheiten. Ähm, wie schafft man das äh, als Familienvater und Ehemann, das alles unter einen Hut zu bekommen, alle zufriedenzustellen? Das ist, ich weiß es selber das nicht a, immer so einfach. Das ist eine sehr gute Frage und es ist direkt zu der falschen Person, weil ich nicht... I don't get it right. I don't balance it. And, uh, but I'm very thankful to, to my wife and, and to my daughter that they understand me. And they understand how important my job is. Uh, but I'll tell you a little story. We, we did um, with ICO, we went this summer to Heidelberg to do the, the A license, the coaching license. And uh, we had um, uh, the visit of Coach Bauer Van. Uh, and as soon as he started the, this meeting with the coaches in, in the room, he said right away, uh, if you have a um, If you're thinking about building a family, if you're thinking about also being a coach, you're going to have to be very clear with, with your future partner. Uh, this is not a regular job. Coaching is not a regular job. Uh, this is a 24-7 job. There is no balance. Uh, we start competing and, and it's just, it gets intensive and intensive and especially if you are a competitor you just gonna keep doing more and more and try to put yourself and your team in situations to win to be successful and to do that sometimes it takes a lot of sacrifices um, we as coaches don't do that to um, to get credit for sacrifices we do it because it's our passion we do it because We love what we do. We love working with players. We try to put them in the best situation for them to be successful and also for the team to be successful. We want everybody to have a, a good experience working with us. Um, but there is no balance. There is no weekends. There is no holidays. Uh, you mentioned before if the game five against Gotha was the um, toughest defeat. Uh, it was a very tough defeat, but the next day, eight in the morning, we were already in the office, we were already preparing for the next season. And, and there is always something to do, there is always an area to improve, there is always uh, goals to achieve. Um, 
and, and we put the bar very, very high. Uh, we are extremely demanding, and I think the players realize that, but we do that because we also do it to ourselves. We are very, very demanding with ourselves. And, and when something doesn't go the way it should be going or the way we would like it to go, the first ones to examine and to see what could be doing better is ourselves, coaching staff uh, especially. So um, I wish I would have the right answer. I don't because definitely I don't do a good job balancing, but I'm very appreciati appreciative of my family, especially wife and daughter, that they understand how important my job for me is. Ähm, nun ist ja Weihnachtszeit. Weihnachten als kleines Kind konnte man sich immer was wünschen. Wenn du dir heute was wünschen könntest, bezogen auf die Niners, was wäre das? Gesundheit. Uh, I would tell Sana that um, uh, thank you for the adversity. It's making us stronger, it's making us better. Uh, we're not backing down. Uh, we're not gonna give up, we're not gonna give in. We're gonna keep fighting, we're gonna keep getting better, we're gonna keep pushing everybody to the limit to try to get the best out of each one uh, in the team, uh, starting with the coaching staff. So, uh, but it would be nice if we can have a little bit of time in which uh, we can work with the same players uh, for a couple of weeks without injuries, without setbacks. Uh, but if they keep happening, uh, it won't matter. We, we won't let circumstances determine the outcome of our season. We will prevail, we will overcome obstacles, we will reach our goals. Um, nun läuft dein Vertrag Ende der Saison aus. Wenn wir uns von Niners Physics die was wünschen könnten, wäre das, dass wir dich auch 2018, 19 als Trainer an der Seitenlinie sehen von den Niners. Wie wahrscheinlich ist das? Gibt es da schon Verhandlungen? Kannst du dazu was sagen? To be honest with you, um, I'm putting all my focus and concentration on the current season. Um, but said that, uh, I gotta be honest with you and tell you that I'm feeling very, very comfortable with the people that I'm working with. Uh, starting with, with Stefan as uh, a sports director, Aiko as an assistant coach, all the guys in the office, uh, our president, Michaela, management. Uh, I feel respected in the Niners organization. I feel like, like I've been here for a long, long time, and hopefully I can stay here also for a long, long time. Uh, one thing is for sure, if one day I will leave the Niners organization, I would like to leave it after I reach my goals with the Niners organization. Um, I'm really uh, appreciative of the uh, position that I'm in, working with people that um, gives me the possibility to do my job to the best of my abilities. And, and as a coach, I can only say thanks to a club that, does, that, that puts me in that situation. And, and again, uh, we set the bar very high and, and we will do whatever is necessary and wh whatever it will take to reach our goals and, and hopefully uh, we will keep doing that here with the Niners for, for a long time to come. Jetzt wollen wir mit der letzten Frage nochmal aufs Tagesgeschäft zurückkommen. Ähm, das nächste Spiel, das ansteht, äh, ist gegen Karlsruhe in der Chemnitz Arena, das große Weihnachtsspiel. Ähm, Wie zuversichtlich bist du, dass deine Jungs, deine Mannschaft äh, genau, vielleicht nicht genau wie letztes Jahr, da war es sehr eindeutig, äh, ich glaube nicht, dass es gegen Karlsruhe so wird, aber wie zuversichtlich bist du, dass wir am Ende wieder als Sieger äh, auf dem Parkett stehen werden? I really believe that our team has, has turned a corner a um, couple of weeks ago. Uh, intensity, determination, um, um, and confidence is slowly starting to, to grow and to get to levels that uh, they should have been from the beginning of the season. 
but um, we will have a very um, determined opponent with a lot of confidence, a team that is very similar uh, to our team last year, that is overachieving, playing without pressure. The expectations were not that high at the beginning of the season. So they're playing without pressure, they're playing good basketball, they're very well coached. Um, but I'm very confident that uh, that we're going to be playing uh, our best basketball and it's going to be a very good game for the fans to watch. Um, and hopefully we can uh, show the best part of of our team and, and hopefully we can finish the 2017 year with a with a very good uh, home game and hopefully a victory. Das wünschen wir uns alle. Wir drücken ganz sehr die Daumen, dass das klappt. Rodrigo, vielen Dank für deine Zeit, uh, viel Erfolg für die nächsten Aufgaben. Und ja, wir wünschen uns natürlich auch alle, dass ihr alle in die Chemnitz Arena kommt zum, äh, zum Weihnachtsspiel. Äh, wir freuen uns. Äh, bis dahin. Stay tuned.